Today I'm going to have a look at my battery bank here and after I reconfigured it a few months ago uh, there were a few comments on those videos and uh, a few of those things have been niggling at the back of my mind and uh, I'm going to make some changes to it today. Now this diagram shows us how my battery bank is wired up at the moment and uh, as you can see all the batteries are in parallel, all the positives connected to each other and all the negatives connected to each other. I take a main positive from one corner of my battery bank and the main negative from the other with the idea that that will make sure that the uh, batteries are drained and charge reasonably evenly although in reality the batteries at each end of the battery bank will do a little bit more of the heavy lifting than the ones in the middle. But the main issue here is these interconnecting uh, cables here are not fused. If something goes wrong here in the middle of the battery bank, a short for some reason, these can uh, deliver an awful lot of current uh, and there is no protection uh, mid-battery bank. So the suggestions are that this is a better way to uh, wire up these batteries uh, with all the negatives joining to uh, a single point and all the positives to another single point. These cables need to be kept the same length to make sure everything is as even as we can make it uh, but it allows us to put these fuses in here and uh, fuse the batteries at a lower level than the overall battery bank. So for example, if each of these batteries is fused at 10 amps, well, we can safely remove 40 amps at any one time from our battery bank. However, let's say this battery here has a fault and has a short, something like that, and the rest of the battery bank starts to deliver an awful lot of current into it, well, the fuse pops and this battery is effectively removed from the whole battery bank. Now for me there are two issues with this design uh, and that's the fact that all the batteries need to go back to a single point and that can be quite difficult and second of all it does create quite a bit more wiring so it could be a bit of a mess but let's see. Now the easiest way to fuse every single battery I think is through one of these um, on each battery a standard blade fuse holder there um, cut it off put some ends on and connect it up and then each battery is fused and obviously I need some uh, corresponding wire for the negatives as well so uh, I've got some uh, crimp on 5mm connectors which are perfect for my battery terminals so uh, I'll just put all those cables together there's no way you want to watch me do that so there we have it, eight inline fuse holders there, um, all crimped up and soldered with these ring connectors at the end and uh, eight uh, negatives as well. And I've done my very best to make sure they're all exactly the same length in both cases of the uh, positives and the negatives. Now this is probably the ideal situation, all your batteries coming back to one single point here where they're all connected and then your main positive in this case coming away from there but unfortunately as you can see I've only got six batteries in here already and I've pretty much run out of space and I've got another two to connect and well that's going to be a bit tricky. Also, I might want to expand this in the future, so I need to come up with a design that's uh, as close as this as possible, but something that perhaps is a little bit more practical. So I decided to buy this aluminium bar to make bus bars out of. It's uh, 5mm by 20mm, and although it does have a higher resistance than copper, uh, for the short distances that I'm using, I don't think it's going to make a great amount of difference. And, of course, aluminium is considerably cheaper than copper. So I need to cut this down to size and drill some holes in it. Now with the aluminium flat bar cut in two, I just need to mark the centre. Um, if I can manage to do that. There we go. So there we are, two bus bars with... Uh, more holes than I need in them. I uh, punched a mark with a punch and then drilled at 3mm and then opened them up to 5mm and uh, yeah I think that will do. 
Now it's at this point I have to admit I've hugely over-engineered this project, mainly because I've recently purchased a 3D printer. So I've been 3D printing some bits to hold on to this bus bar. There we go, one bit at each end, and hopefully, if the measurements are correct, a bit in the middle as well, just to isolate the two bus bars. So I'm mounting the bus bars in my 3D printed brackets on this piece of wood here, but before I put this end on, I need to add some other items, and it's these. And these are clips which are going to hold a nut, if I can get it in the right way, on the back of the bus bar, there we go, and uh, they will uh, hold them behind the hole so I can screw in from the front, uh, and I've left a bit of space there in the uh, bracket so that the nut can move up or down slightly and obviously the holder will move along the bar because uh, well I don't expect all of my holes are perfectly central so let's see if that goes up there perfect so I've got black ones for the negative side and of course because this is a massively over engineered project I've got red ones for the positive side there we go. Excellent. And there you have it, two bus bars with the captive nut holders uh, set there, ready. And, uh, well, these bus bars need to go into here. That needs screwing down. And, uh, well, I think we're about ready to uh, start connecting things up. So hopefully this theory is going to work. If I line up the uh, nut behind there, in goes uh, the connector, we'll get it the right way around, and uh, screws down, hopefully nice and tight, yeah, do you know what, I think that's going to work. So there we have my two bus bars all finished up and I'm genuinely really pleased how well these uh, little nut holders have worked. I've been able to tighten these down really well without uh, a single one sounding like it was going to break. Now it's also time to put some fuses in and I've gone for a 10 amp here and uh, oh, that's quite tight. That means a decent connection hopefully and uh, we'll put the lid on. Uh, you'll notice I've uh, isolated uh, the connectors at the end, both the positive and the negative, until I'm ready to uh, attach them to my battery to make sure I don't make any mistakes, I guess. So I'm going to mark up these two batteries because they've been at the end of the string here with the main positive there and the main negative here for a while now, so they'll have taken a bit of a hit. We'll make sure they're in the middle of the pack when I rebuild it. Well, there we go, the first battery completely disconnected, and of course the sun's come out now, and I could be charging them. So there we have it, all the batteries removed, and now actually I'm looking at it, I'm thinking I might put the batteries on this shelf all the way down at the bottom, um, because I think this shelf is more useful underneath my workbench um, for stuff, really, other than batteries. So there we have the bus bar ready to uh, wire up to the batteries. And uh, that's the battery temperature sensor as well. So, uh, yeah, I think this is going to look reasonably neat. Now, many people mentioned on my previous video about my battery bank that my batteries were a bit close together. And unfortunately, as you can see, that's still going to be the case. The size of these shelves and, well, the size of the shed means I'm very tight on space and they are going to have to touch each other. But at least... All these batteries have two ends uncovered now, whereas previously the batteries in the middle of the battery bank were covered on three sides. So as you can see, all the positives are connected now uh, with the fuses, biased right as close as possible to the positive of each battery. So uh, this one was a little bit tight, possibly a little bit short, but uh, remember all the wires are the same length. And there we have it, all eight batteries rewired so that they're individually fused, connecting to that bus bar. So all I need to do now is connect the main positive and the main negative up to that bus bar. So there we have it now, all eight batteries connected and the main positive and the main negative connected as well. And of course there are opposite ends of the bus bar because I've still got a ladder 
of batteries here so I still need to be taking one from one corner and another one from the other corner so uh, I'm pretty pleased with that so all we need to do now is turn the main power on there's that and the charge controller and my inverter yeah the lights are back on the shed so there we have it everything's working in the shed again the battery bank has been reconfigured uh, and what does that mean well of course it means it's raining again now oh dear hopefully you've enjoyed this video if you have give me a thumbs up subscribe down below comment if you can and i'll see you next time thanks for watching